All right, guys, have to come back here today. Hope you're all doing well and enjoying your day so far. Crim6 has given his thoughts on the current state of the Optic Texas team, saying that while Rambo may technically have stepped away from being the head coach, they still need a coach like Rambo or potentially like Crim6. Crim has thrown his hat in the ring potentially to be the Optic coach either now or down the line, but saying for the discipline element of their gameplay, they need a character like Crim in the room to ensure they can maintain the consistency they need over time. Very much enjoy to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe Subscribe if you're new as always, I would greatly appreciate it. Plenty to dive into. Firstly, from Mr. Doug St. Martin, we know of course that he changed to the AR role on his Boston Academy team quite recently, but he's finally hitting form it seems on it. He made the grand finals most recently with the Boston team of the most recent Challengers Cup. We'll see them in action soon enough. And of course, the likes of Beans and Crimp and others have been getting offers from his Boston Academy roster into the main league. So um, if they can continue performing, then Doug will maintain his spot for some time longer. And you know, I think Doug's a good asset for this team to have anyway because, you know, they get talked about every so often on this channel and others. Doug does say, though, that everyone on his team has received a league offer at some point outside of Shawnee. And, of course, Shawnee was in the league right on London not too long ago. But, um, you know, even as Doug says, criminally underrated. So maybe that'll happen at some point or another. It'll be quite fun to see. Speaking of Doug, though, he makes quite the statement last night. When I make the league and beat FaZe for a championship, I will be the only player in Call of Duty history to beat the complexity, optic, and FaZe dynasty for a championship. Now, um, it's quite the interesting analysis here from Doug. And I think he might be right about this one in terms of he has beaten complexity and optic in a grand finals for a victory. So if he was to take down the phase dynasty in a grand final, okay, dynasty is always a questionable term with phase anyway, whether you consider them one, whether you don't, but you know, whatever Doug seems to. So if he was to be able to beat them in a grand finals, then he would achieve such a thing. But um, of course, it's somewhat wishful thinking. Now, Clay has already done this in part, as in he's beaten those teams at events and then got on to win the event, but I don't believe he was able, able to beat Complexity in the finals of an event to win it. He took them down to the semi-finals of X Games and then won the finals. So, um, you know, you could argue whether, and they were evil geniuses then, but it's still basically the same team. So it, Doug says, I mean, for a championship, not a series dub. And um, Doug says, my dream is to beat FaZe for a ring because I think they're the best dynasty. So classic uh, center type stuff. Dropping some sort of spicy take here, right? But uh, yeah, as he says, apparently they're the best dynasty. FaZe want to beat them for my world championship. I beat FaZe for a ring in Modern Warfare, right? Which is also true. So, um, you know, took down, obviously, FaZe, slightly different team then. Always a big question about dynasties, right? And whether, you know, do FaZe count as a dynasty, even if you consider them one, with Simp, Selim, and Abizi? Now they've got Slasher instead of Arsites. Does the one-man change change up that dynamic? But I think people that make that argument are missing maybe the, the fact that the complexity dynasty started with Clayser and they won a lot, and then they dropped Clay for Karma, and then it continued. So, um, you know, there was a, a change in that team, but it kind of is all considered the same complexity dynasty, and even the Optic dynasty, like uh, many would argue, and I think understandably that Nadeshot should be part of that, because he went back to back to back, I believe, with Optic, right to the start of Advanced Warfare, when they kind of started the dynasty, then Enable came in, they won two events. So, you know, I don't know. I think if you are going to consider FaZe a dynasty, then you've got to give them some credit regardless of the fact that they may have made one or two changes over time. And I thought this is a pretty funny picture actually from, uh, you know, the new Codview stuff with Mr. Graster in full effect. Speaking of Kaleachi, I thought it was kind of crazy just to look at his run on complexity where he made eight grand finals and won seven championships. And then when he was dropped there for Karma, many questioned as did, you know, Aix in that famous clip where he says, that's why you got dropped, how much success Clay would have, but since then, 11 championships, 21 finals, won the championship three times, won the world championship, X Games gold medal, all this type of stuff. I thought this is cool as well from Brian that puts together the KD for every world championship, some of which, of course, he played with Crim6 back in the Modern Warfare 2019 days, and um, I mean, yeah, apparently Black Ops 3 starts nowhere to be found, unfortunately, but it was that 1.31 KD in Advanced Warfare that was pretty crazy that won him the MVP and, of course, the championship at that particular tournament. Now, Clay, of course, has teamed with Crim6 a fair a bit and maybe it didn't end on the best possible terms but uh, nonetheless Krim has been streaming um, on a good level the last few days it's been great to see been given some entertaining commentary as always and he gave his thoughts on the optic team this I believe was pre the series they played up against FaZe but um he gives his opinion on what
what they need in terms of their coaching staff. We know that the Rambo dashy thing just straight up didn't work and they've gone their separate ways for now or at least Rambo's taken a step back in terms of what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. JP, their analyst, is now still their analyst. I imagine he's trying to take up some coaching responsibilities but we know the discipline of this optic team. Some of the plays they made against subliners especially were not quite there and yes they played much better against FaZe. Can they keep that up on a consistent level when they play top teams back to back to back to try and win a major? That's going to be a challenge and Krim reckons they need a coach like him to make that happen. Whether it will be him or not is uh, unlikely. You're saying you go to Optic? I mean, dude. Pred almost sold it. They at minimum Just need someone like me the as, their, there, though, as their coach. And at New minimum. York, sometimes that works. If you can find a pick early, it allows Do they still not have a coach? Opens up some mid. No? Okay, so Rambo, Rambo's now, still coaching them, guys. <laughs> Rambo is still coaching them. Surge, a clinical round from them. <laughs> if they... Nice <laughs> and I think the thing is, is that... They, <laughs> Rainbow's well, still coaching them, really bro. Them really so I feel like there's always an element here. When they lost to subliners, that you know, there's always like an overreaction. And then when they beat FaZe, there's almost like an overreaction the other way, I think, at times, where the problems they had against subliners are still there. They just might not have done them against FaZe, I think, right? So, I mean, this particular moment was the one where we saw Dashi's face, right, during this search and destroy. He just looked absolutely dead inside. And I don't blame him because this is a four versus two bomb down. Who, for some reason, jumps out the window here. 4v2, bomb down situation, 39 seconds on the clock who just has to stand still and they win this round he jumps out and dies then Shotzi dies as well and then ghosty goes for the challenge dies as well and within like three seconds or within like five four seconds of um you know being a 4v2 with bomb down a huge advantage for optic dashi finds himself in a one versus two so it's moments like this where optic just still have a tendency to throw situations because they think oh just child the guy type thing and maybe there's an element of which they need to slow that down i could made the point not that long ago about um you know the fact that Shotzi is maybe too flashy nowadays, right? He basically said that Shotzi that he played with in the Modern Warfare days was a little bit more reserved in terms of the plays that he made. He didn't go rogue too often. Shotzi back then, he played on a more consistent level and maybe that was part of playing with Krim. It more than likely was. Nowadays, Shotzi, the movement king, all this stuff. And uh, look, he's obviously incredible at the movement and all this, but Krim would argue that he goes too rogue too often as in like, you know, it's difficult to keep up with what he's doing. And because he gets gassed a lot by the Optic fans, therefore he makes a mistake stakes in his play style, does a bit too much all the time. So, you know, what do you guys think? Would a character like Krim coming into that team actually make things work? Because for whatever reason, the Rambo dashy dynamic didn't work. Now, I actually think that Rambo, and I mean, look, let's be honest here, Rambo, Shotzi, and Hook, and even Illy, they must have got on well enough during the days where they were winning the World Championship together back in the Dallas Empire days, and maintains that relationship through to the Cold War days when they started that season. Now, we know that Rambo and Krim had a big falling out in that particular year and but seemingly on the Optic Texas team when Rambo came over with Shotzi and Hook when they actually put the when they merged the, the two lineups like clearly Shotzi and Hook you'd imagine get on with Rambo and feel like he's a valuable asset it was just the dashy thing that clearly didn't work and Hex decided maybe for good reason to choose dashy over Rambo and go down that route going forward but I think Krim probably makes a fair point that there's an argument to say that Shotzi benefits from having a character like Rambo in the room to um you know give thoughts on how to you know know basically just hold him back at times for making some mistakes that they make now can JP do that to the same level probably not but there's also an argument to say that a coach like Rambo that can give very valuable insights on the way the game should be played but hasn't played this particular game at a certain level is you know maybe not the optimal player to be giving advice like that whereas a guy like Krim or even a guy like Karma I know that you know obviously Dashi let's say Karma was the coach for this team he wouldn't be but let's say he was I'm sure Dashi would have immense respect for Karma whereas he might not necessarily for Rambo and also we know that Krim and Dashi seem to have made up recently so if Krim was magically the coach over there then maybe Dashi could get on with him and Krim could you know maybe hold back and help shots in hook a bit I just don't see this idea that Optic have of not really having a coach to try and hold them in and rein them in at times is even in and out of the game is really going to work in the long term I mean we just see their consistency right they lost to Thieves at the Major beat Gorillas, lost to Toronto beat Minnesota lost to New York beat FaZe it's like it's all 
over the place, this optic team right now, and I think it will continue to be. And that's not necessarily conducive to a distant major run where they have to beat many good teams in a row to win a championship, let's say. So we'll see how it goes to their home major, but I think Crim6 might have touched on an interesting point here that they might need a character like Crim and maybe even like Rambo, but just not Rambo because it doesn't work with Dashi. And right now, Rambo's obviously stepped away to do content and analysis stuff outside of the game, which I think is very interesting and insightful. If you guys haven't checked out Rambo's channel, certainly worthwhile having a look. Also wanted to share this clip before we close out the video here from Slasher. Speaking of, uh, you know, potentially teaming with Crim back in the day, because the Optic Dynasty during the World War II days was obviously going to blow apart. Now, in fairness, the timing on this, I'm not sure is quite perfect, but Slasher at the start of the season was initially on Envy, and he reckons that what Optic should have done is picked him up onto the team. When Formal was getting dropped from the team, or not really getting dropped, but the Optic Dynasty broke apart, they were obviously going to keep Scump and Crim and potentially Karma. But, um, you know, even as uh, Slasher says here, maybe picking him up for Formal would have been the solution that season, and he reckons they certainly wouldn't have placed top 32 at champs. I mean, Austin, if you wanted to team with Scump so bad, you could have just picked him up when you owned Optic. So, <laughs> Slasher's Optic. Slasher, nah, I didn't have to realistically try to pick me up in World War II. They fumbled the bag big on that one. We'll pick I you on instead of Sam or uh, Zen. Yeah, I mean, well, I wouldn't have let the Sam Zen ro roster happen. It would have just been me, Scump, Cram, and we would have found one or kept Damon. Yeah, the the uh, the World War Two that team would have now got top thirty two. I mean, I know Tommy not going to Optic complicated that because there was they made a move before a move in order to do all that. I think Tommy's talked about that before. But yeah, no. Once it didn't go through, like they should have still. But I was a complete not... free agent because I didn't sign my extension. I like didn't take salary. Oh, the, for like... the envy thing. You're yeah, about I envy didn't thing? take salary for like three or four months. Yeah, they probably should have. So I basically up. paid my own buyout, and I was free, and they didn't hit me up. So that would have made sense because mistake. Yeah, no, they would have been would have been better. Can't leave Thanos, Thanos hanging. Thanos was available. So then I just went to Rise and won a couple of events. So Slasher might have a fair and interesting point too. I did think it was kind of funny in a way, the fact that he says, oh, they definitely wouldn't have placed top 32. In fairness, they placed top 24, technically, Optic at that event. With, of course, they had Octane and Method in the team for some reason because they couldn't get Zuma or John or whatever other SMG player they actually wanted. So they had to get Zinni for some reason, unfortunately. But if Slasher was here in the team instead, funny in a way, though, that they got top 24 this tournament and Slasher's team, Rye, has got top, uh, I think they got top 16 because they got double rounded in the winner's bracket, unfortunately, for them after getting getting through their group with it as it was at the time. So yeah, what do you guys think? If Slasher was to team up with Optic back in the day, like, I mean, the course of history would have changed so massively had that been the case. Slasher was also so good at that game. That team with Scump and Krim and whoever the fourth was, if it was Karma or not, would have been pretty deadly. And, you know, their route of getting Octane and Methods didn't really work out so well. And I just wanted to share this for you guys. I thought you might find it interesting from Optic Maniac to close out the video. If you guys are a billionaire and you can buy out all contracts in the CDL and not have to worry about anything at all, form a God Squad squad, what is the roster that you start with? And I feel like a lot of people, what they do here is they'll sign players that are really good from various teams, but there's no guarantee they'll work that well together. I know that what a lot of people would do, and I think maybe for good reason, would be to say, okay, I'll get a BZ, I'll get Simple, I'll get Selium, and then just plus one, right? And like, whoever you think that plus one is, is quite interesting. But uh, there's also an argument that says, can I, like, can I resist getting Pred or Hydra or one of these players just because I can get them for free? Can I try and get Sky? back or something like how much I have to pay him to get scum back on my team I don't know just an idea but very much intrigued to your thoughts on all this stuff in the comments below hit the like button if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new take care and I'll see you next time damn bro they got three people over at double arches holy sh beans is five and oh what a piece of sh I'm not happy for you but god damn you're playing really well and you're a rookie in the league so congrats it's actually really cool but it's against us so I have to say I hate it Beans is eating us alive brother had his toast me too if Beans finds Straza here as he stumps his way up this motherfucker goes sugar five calories good snipe by Beans go yourself buddy you're playing really Easy well i'm beans. not happy for you holds the Blue angle. momentum a little bit as well. them right beans now. cheating the still the somebody get this man out the league send him back to challengers nobody likes a cheater through,